the second piece of evidence for dark matter comes from the motion of galaxies in galaxy clusters. Now, as for what galaxy clusters are, well, as I said, galaxies are collections of stars moving around a common center. Now, occasionally, we find such galaxies packed together in clusters, moving around each other in no particular pattern. Still, uh, we assume that the same laws of motion apply again, and so um, the velocity of the galaxies in such clusters uh, would still depend on the amount of matter inside the cluster. And again, we observe that there are galaxies which are moving much too fast in regards to the matter that we can see in those clusters. So again, we are led to believe that there is more matter around than we can actually observe. Hence, more dark matter. In fact, this is exactly the evidence Fritz Fick used to first postulate dark matter. Uh, now, the third piece of evidence is what we call gravitational lensing. Now, um, well, I hate to contradict myself within a single episode, but uh, I guess I have to, to explain this properly. Uh, well, all I have to this point taught you about gravity is based on Newton's law of gravity. Now, uh, Newton's law of gravity states that gravity is a force that attracts objects that have mass towards each other, and hence does not affect light, which is essentially massless. Now, uh, this was shown to be inaccurate. In fact, uh, Albert Einstein came up with a more suiting theory, namely, general relativity, which actually states that uh, matter does not simply exert a force on other objects, but actually bends space-time and affects both matter and light. Now, uh, this theory actually predicts that light, which passes near a heavy object, uh, actually moves in a bent path and can cause us to see the uh, light source at a different or even several positions. This is what we would call a gravitational lensing event. No, under the right circumstances, what can happen is um, a heavy object may bend the light in such a way that the light of the light source is focused towards our line of sight, while other lensing events require masses as big as galaxy clusters. Uh, these sort of lensing events require much lesser mass. Hence, uh, we call them micro-lensing events. So, um, if we were observing a bright object, far away and a big piece of dark matter just moved through the line of sight, uh, we may well observe a brightening of the light source for a period of time. And in fact we actually observe such events, so this is yet another piece of evidence for dark matter. So um, this is how we know, or at least why we think we know that dark matter exists. In fact, when we use these findings to estimate how much dark matter we have, it turns out that about 85% of the mass of our universe is made up by dark matter. In other words, we are only able to detect about 15% of the matter in our universe. Quite scary, hey? Now, um, the important question we have to ask ourselves, of course, is what is dark matter? Well, so far, physicists have come up with several candidates which can effectively be classed in two groups. The first one being 
massive compact halo objects, or in short, machos. Or um, the second one, weakly interacting massive particles, or in short, WIMPs. Now, uh, machos, or massive compact halo objects, are essentially just high mass stellar remnants, in other words, burned out stars, uh, that emit little or no radiation. Examples of possible machos would be, for example, white dwarfs, neutron stars, or black holes. Another more exotic possibility would be a quark star, although they have not yet been shown to actually exist. Anyways, uh, when we talk about machos, we talk about great amounts of mass in a relatively compact object. So uh, these are exactly the types of dark matter we can detect using microlensing. However, from the number of gravitational microlensing events that occur, we can see that there are not enough machos around to account for all the dark matter and there is only about 20%, which leads me to the second candidate of dark matter, namely WIMPs. Now, uh, when we talk about WIMPs, or weakly interacting massive particles, the first thing uh, to note is that we are no longer talking about structures, but only single particles. Uh, when we say massive, we mean particles that have a comparatively great mass. And by weakly interacting, we mean they only interact through uh, the weak force and gravity. Now, uh, all you need to know about the weak force for now is that it's much weaker than the electromagnetic or the nuclear force. And so uh, weak interactions are very rare and hard to detect. Um, there could be thousands of WIMPs passing through you right now, and you would not notice. Now, uh, there are experiments and detectors in place right now trying to detect WIMPs and to potentially find out what they are exactly. These experiments are held deep underground to keep them safe from cosmic rays. Unfortunately, they have not produced any results as yet, so we will still have to wait. There are um, hypothetical names given to the particles that may be WIMPs, which are either uh, neutralinos or axions, but well, I'll get back to those another time. Thank you.